Cleveland Academics, then there's a uh, library home, Cleveland library home, and, and then uh, three columns in the middle, there is uh, a start to your research here on the third bullet, find the database by name, if you click on that, then uh, alphabetically uh, labeled. So first label, A, A for ACM. ACM stands for <coughs> Association of Computing Machines. <coughs> so, and then uh, the third items uh, in that category is the ACM Digital Libraries. If you load this, if you access this from home, then there is another uh, step that you need to pass through. It checks your credentials. Ask you to enter your login name, login name of your uh, connect.mustadidu login ID and password. The exact same login name, login name and password will be used. So, so you can get to this uh, ACM digital <coughs> Okay. All right. <clears throat> so I wanted to work on this uh, continually, emphasize, and spend more time next week because we do not have a class. So next week, next Wednesday, no online site, no on-site lecture, July 17th. <clears throat> okay. Uh, <clears throat> since, although I'm not here next week, but since you are still working on, so I wanted to uh, submit a progressive report. This is not final reports, progressive reports. Uh, <clears throat> according to this format, I want you to <clears throat> write a title page, an abstract of your work, and I, I'm going to ask you uh, four, I mean, four sections: introduction, problem description, related work, and my approach. In your final submission, you will have, I think, two or more sections, five detailed description of uh, your approach, six conclusion, and the list of references. The related work here, yeah, I think you have to, I'm going to revise this a little bit. So what you need to do, This is the format that you need to submit. Due date is 23rd. I think that is... Oh, it is not. It's not designed yet. So what you need to do, what I ask you to do, I can create Word 
that's a report. The assignment, right? Due date is June 24th, 2012. I think I did that. Oh, wait a minute. Is it the one that I already? I think that is the one. Yeah, this is a piece of Let me check. If I do this. This is a homework, right? Is that right? Yeah, this is a homework. Yeah, I already did. Okay. All right. Any question? Till two weeks from today. Everyone knows what to do, right? <clears throat> Although you may not know how to do yet, but you know what to do. So right, are... Ramon? <laughs> Good evening, Ramon. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> because of that, you didn't <laughs> respond. I did. Raymond. Yeah. Raymond. Your name is not all Y M O N D. Your name is R A M O N. That's why I call it a little different from Raymond. Right, Nicole? Oh, those two guys uh, came in while I was learning about that. So you understand what you need to do, right? Next two weeks. So no class next week. But it doesn't mean that no work at your side. We have to work. Okay. Uh, Python hacking that we need to do today continually. Uh, for, for those who do not have a, a work environment, uh, here is a module that I made, so you can follow. <coughs> if you do not have, hey, hey, you to say hello to everyone. Everybody. <laughs> There's a seat, front, up oh, front. Okay. Um, <clears throat> environment. Uh, Windows. Uh, it's not a good platform for you to do, uh, for example, hacking, attacking, defending. So we rather choose a uh, Linux platform. If you do not have a Linux platform, uh, I want you to set up on your own. Particularly, David, do you know Linux? Mm -hmm. Have you heard of that? Yeah. Do you have a Linux uh, uh, platform? Uh, any computer uh, running on Linux? Do you have a Mac? No, I'm a PC guy. Okay. Are you willing to? Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, Linux, uh, originally developed by uh, GNU. As I said, the GNU stands for? G 
GNU is not Unix. That is what GNU stands for. Okay. As I said, the PHP stands for PHP Hypertext Programming. PHP Hypertext Programming. So PHP. But to define it, use that name also. If we say uh, the full name of GNU, GNU, the GNU stands for GNU is not Unix. N for not, U for Unix. So that is a Linux, it's not Unix, okay? So quite different, but it's very similar, right? So powered by uh, GNU Linux, it's a free all the time, all the time. Linux itself is free. But if you want to run Linux on your uh, platform, I appreciate your contribution. I'm happy to have uh, VMware workstation successfully done uh, at my side, uh, but I cannot say, but you have to <laughs> have that. Uh, once you have a Linux, I mean GNU Linux, uh, you can uh, GNU Linux usually has uh, Python in it already. Some types of uh, GNU C libraries. C, GCC, and, and C related things. Okay? Uh, depending on the platform that you are working on. If you have uh, <coughs> Windows, then you could do uh, virtualize your Windows system, or you can download the Sigwins and run Sigwin, Sigwin uh, itself. But Sigwin is good for, uh, it, is, it, is, it is not bad. But initially I was thinking of using Sigwin for this class. But it's not really a good idea. Although you know Sigwins is not really standard uh, in market, it may not help you much. So once you know something, then it should be good selling, right? So why not jump into the real situation, which is uh, uh, virtualization? There are two ways of virtualization. You can download the Oracle VM box, virtual yeah, VM box. That's a free, free from Oracle. But I failed to, down, uh, to uh, download and installation, all good. And uh, install guest operating systems, no problem. But it's not uh, permanently saved. The, op op the configuration of the guest operating systems. That is the issue. Therefore, I switch it to two VMware workstation. Okay? So what I did, my configuration for this class, I'm using VMware workstation, where I have a, a Python 2.7, little bit regress. Currently, Python, version for Python is 3.5. There is a beta version 3.6. But if you work, if you want to work on <coughs> Linux operating systems, then still 2.7. Still okay. It's very powerful. So almost all the works available. More modules available for 2.7 2 than 3.5. Uh, GCC and GDB should be downloaded. But we are not that uh, place yet. We are today also Python. Maybe next week still Python. But second half of this class will do GCC. So C programming will be coming up. If you have a Mac user, Mac has built-in Linux. You can simply use it by bringing up terminals. 
or still you can virtualize it. VMware workstation or Oracle VM box. Both are good. Personally, I like uh, Oracle VM box, which is uh, more powerful and, and more options that we can manipulate that I used to use. I started using a VM workstation many, many years ago. And then I switched it to Oracle VM box, having no problem. But the recent version of Oracle uh, VM box has some issue. I thought that is on my uh, laptop only. Oh, maybe so. But if you cannot afford to buy VMware workstation, better to download Oracle VM box free. Then you have a charge and try with it. VMware workstation, uh, the simple version, I'm not sure. Maybe not more than 200 dollars, right? 100 something. Close to 20. So a little bit over 20. A little bit more. Or you can, or you can do something. Because it is recorded, I can say. Um, <clears throat> It's up on. Okay. <coughs> this is Oracle. I. If you have Oracle or VM virtual box, then you can download. Anyway, you have to download uh, the Ubuntu. Uh, Linux also has. Uh, uh, multiple different uh, versions. I know somebody is talking about Debian, or Ubuntu, or many others available. Okay, Red Hat. And... But Ubuntu is is a simple and easy to use, so I strongly recommend you to use Ubuntu. Ubuntu, yeah. Uh, or you can use uh, yeah, something else. So I wrote those are the steps that you need to install. Uh, but I'm not going to follow that. If you have a VMware, very simple use. This is uh, what I did. Once you install workstation 11 and now you are ready to uh, include guest operating systems. So what happens is at the bottom we have you have <coughs> Windows virtual box on top of it. On top of virtual box you might have a multiple operating systems. You might have another uh, Windows, maybe more than one Linux, you name it, right? As far as you have enough uh, uh, memory spaces, you can bring up more and more. Um, to do that, you have to create a virtual machine by clicking that uh, first uh, square, this, so you have to click the plus sign so on the fly it asks you uh, questions you you answers if before you do before you uh, uh, virtual if you set up a virtual virtual box no, not virtual, virtual machine I mean a specific operating systems you have to use you have to download the ISO image file first. So choose that image file. If you choose uh, Ubuntu, then that is your Ubuntu 
virtual machine. Uh, memory size, uh, one gig minimum, but two gig better. And then if you don't successfully, then you will have finally uh, that specific uh, label of your virtual machine. I call it Ubuntu something, right? As, it, as you can see. So if you have this, so you can click this. If nothing clicked, then this triangle is unhighlighted. So once you choose any one of those uh, virtual machines, I have three virtual machines. So click this, then, then uh, this one is highlighted. So you can click that triangle, which means put that operating system. So Linux operating system finally works. Uh, first thing that system asks you to do is to for you to enter the key, key of that um, virtual box, VMware. Key, if you purchase, then you will receive the key. So once you have that uh, virtual machine available, then so our work is not just to click, 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 and, and view some, and monitor some, and enjoy, but a little bit coding, right? So we need the terminal. How can you bring up the terminal? Control R to the T, then terminal will come up. Okay. Raymond, did you successfully uh, set up Seagoing? Yeah. Oh, congratulations. What happened to this? So far, I got uh, three kinds of bees things. Honeybee, when I was young. So many times. I have no allergy to honeybee thing. Last year, at Bronx campus, when I had the open house, is a bumble, bumblebee? Bumblebee? Is a bumblebee or bumblebee? That's very strong. It uh, hit, attacked twice here. Monday. The day before yesterday. Wasp. Attacked. Two here and there. It's very sore and a little bit of an ache. So I thought, oh. And I stopped working from my backyard inside. And I showed to my wife. And I feel something, I don't feel well. It's like DJ. And then something itching. This, this, toes. What was she doing? It's an allergy. So, so I went to emergency. And when I arrived at uh, the hospital, <coughs> my whole body real red and then swallowed. And then doctor said, are you okay? Breathe, okay? So I, yeah, no problem, this part is okay. When they check, when they confirm my breath is okay, then they don't care me much. They care something else. They said, you'll be okay, wait. <laughs> and then I, I had some IVs and, and some anti, and some, some medication, I don't know. Three kinds of medication into my blood system. So I laid down uh, about an hour, and then everything disappeared. But still, a little bit of this part. 
two two spots. So three kinds of beads. There are all kinds of beads, right? Wasp. There's also wasp is so poisonous. The difference between honeybees and wasp is that honeybees there is only one sting, one sting, no more sting. That bee will die, right? That is their life. Wasp, there is a one sting, but it can continue, continue to <laughs> attack. There's a full amount of uh, poisons carried, so it can attack multiple times. So two times is okay. For me. So one thing after this, the doctor said. If I have, if I am attacked again from wasp, the symptom will get worse and worse than the first time. That's very similar to cyborg. <laughs> first time of cyborg attack, maybe okay. Once you are attacked, therefore there is an attacker. Right? Attacker knows that you are vulnerable. The next time when they attack, they know how to kill you. Right? What is this? Ah, oh, this is some tips. Um, okay. And I was thinking of uh, if we have a VM uh, where workstation. Uh, many years ago, when I taught uh, the Linux over VMware workstation, I asked students to learn a VI editor. VI, VI, VI stands for uh, Visual. Visual editor, VI from visual. Why visual? It is a visual, like 50 years ago. At that time, 50 years ago, well, I never used it. But 50 years ago, when they accessed the computer, there was only one type of editor available, which is called line editor, line editor. One line, enter, then it submitted it to the computer, and next line, of course not by the keyboard, but punch card, right? One punch card is one line. If you have a hundred lines, which means hundred punch cards, and, and there is a, some job control card and some ending, some cards end up. So, full sets of cards. One card, we. So, there's a line editor. And then, VI editor was, I, I believe it was, uh, it became popular in in United States, uh, 1970s. Line editor. Luckily, I was using when I was in high school in Korea because we got some free support from U.S. governments at the time. So, uh, <clears throat> only one institution in South Korea, they have uh, their computer systems. So Korean government selected 20 students. Luckily, I was in that 20 students. So we got the free training, 1980s, not 70s. So the, it's a visual editor. That time, oh, we, we cannot access keyboard. But we write down, then the typewriter. 
full time typewriter. Is this typewriter? It's not, it's, not called, it's not called the key puncher. Key puncher is earlier. And after that, type, typist. Typist. Typist sitting on the computer monitor, and there's a keyboard. Computer monitor like this, and keyboard. And she types on behalf of us. And then we can access individually to the keyboard uh, late 19. 80s. You can access. You never had that dark and dark IT ages. But anyway, the idea for that is VI editor is not easy, right? VI editor, say 50 years ago. It's like sensational at this time. Oh, VI editor, it's not line editor. But now VI editor is very, very hard for you. But once you know VI editor, then at, at any Linux operating systems available, you can edit it. VI editor is by default, that is the editor for any Linux and Unix operating systems. Once there is a Linux operating system, then there is a BI editor. If you do not know BI editor, then you have to use some other editors. For example, Notepad or WordPad or whatever that you get used to, right? But you do not have. Linux operating systems usually do not provide you that. So what I looked at here is Right now we have two. As I said, you have here uh, Windows, for example. Windows has, say, Notepad. And here, virtualization. VMware Workstation, for example. And then you have multiple Operate, guest operating systems. One of them is Ubuntu. Ubuntu has a terminal. So that you can edit. You can create a, a document, right? Say, my uh, attack py is a Python. You need to create that document, that source file. If you are working on this here in uh, Linux, we need to use bi editor. Bi yeah. dollar sign is the prompt of that command. As I said, um, the cursor movement is not easy. Not easy means it's not by, it's all key, keypad. J goes to left to arrow, uh, for example, J left arrow, K, I up arrow, K right arrow, M down, and then there is, uh, and if you use those key, keypad, as it is, then you have to press another button to do that. Not the control key, but uh, the, uh, the letter key itself, then you have to do some other combinations. So all those things need to be known. And I had experience with our students who has some difficulties and problems. So what I want to do is, can we create some of the file here in Windows and still use that here in Ubuntu? How nice. It is possible. So editing is not really a big issue. You can walk here and bring that up here and run and, and back and forth, possible. 
right? If you do this very well, then you can bring it here. So next time, if you remove this operating systems completely from your laptop, you still have all the work that you've done here at the end of here. It's nice, right? So that is the way. In VMware, you can do VM tab and settings. Uh, there's a pop-up menus and then uh, a shared folder, click always, enabled, and add button, choose a VM folder, say OK. If you do that all, then uh, you might have this. You have shared folders highlighted, in enabled, and then uh, Folder sharing, you should say always enabled. And then here, folder, you need to choose a specific folder. If you want to show, if you want to share all the C drives over your Windows systems, all the C drives over your Windows systems, and all the operating systems in Ubuntu, transparent, shareable, then you need to choose that way. Or if you, if you want to choose only specific subdirectory on this Windows, that is possible also. If it is available, then why not? Entire C, that's what I did. Right here, you will look at that. And then and after that, okay. It is ready now. Then how can we really use it? This is Ubuntu, right? And there's a computer. And the computer, computer, if you click computer, then it shows all the files on top of your Linux operating systems. On top of your Linux operating system, there is a directory called the MNT. MNT stands for? Hmm? Mount. Yeah, something mounted. Actually, it is mounted. It's nothing but mounted. Your Windows system, your Windows system is mounted to your Linux through MNT directory. If you click on the MNT, then it's, you can see that for them. Okay. You can copy it. And another tip. Okay. All right. So if you have some difficulties with that and and try. This is not this is not main uh, part of our course material. Our course material is for today. What we looked at it here is this, right? Module three, coding environment. Let's go back to module two, Python hacking. Slide, there are two sets of slides, slide one and slide two, okay? And lecture one and two, those are video recording, so if you need to review. Uh, so we are going to do slide one and slide two today. Uh, because we are using Scapy. Scapy, Scapy is not uh, well running on the Windows system. Anyway, we have to use Linux. If you do not have Linux, I strongly recommend you to have a Linux uh, machine, Linux virtual machine on your laptop so that we can work together, okay? Scapy is simple to implement. If you do not have uh, Linux, almost impossible. I tried, I spent several days and weeks. If I resolve one, there are another problem, another problem, another problem. So many unknown, Cascading problems mm -hmm. occur, so 
Okay, any questions so far? So what we need to do, uh, today we'll do, we'll start from, uh, Windows, okay, Windows, and then switch to Linux. I think a client is over, right? Okay. I think here is okay. Client is over. So, uh, on your Windows systems, I wanted to create client program. Somebody's, I think, David and Ty, Tyre, 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 Tyre. You do not have a laptop? Or you didn't bring it? Okay. You didn't bring it. Yeah. You have a laptop, right? Yeah. But anyway, we have to practice today. So... So client program is like this. Similar to that. Right? Socket program is socket module is used to. What socket module can do for client is can connect, send and receive. Connect socket of your um, client IP. We have a client and server. IP can be shared in our case, in your case also, right? It's a loopback. We're going to use on your one single system, but you have a client and server programs running. So client, but they do not have, they, they are using different uh, port numbers. Server open up its own designated port number. Client, we do not assign any port number. But client, when it talk to the server, it choose one of the port number and access. So connect. When we when client connected to server, then client uh, client here, client here. This is a client. In order to, uh, before we connect, we have to create an object of a uh, socket. Object of a uh, client socket. Socket is created, object of socket is created by uh, the function socket. It takes two, two or three arguments. This is type of uh, uh, sockets. This is Somehow, well, we have to look up the manual, as I said somewhere here. In order to do, in order to show that, you have to read this.
here. Back up. Yeah. So one, one slide before this. I said read this API, docs.python.org slash 3.4 library socket.html. If you go to this, Socket. Sock family, uh, AF uh, Unix or AF uh, in net, inet. That those are the uh, socket family. And then socket type, those are socket family. And type could be, this is what we are going to use. Uh, describe the first argument of that uh, socket uh, function can take is a family of socket and the type of socket. And then protocol uh, and so on and so forth. But we do not describe the last two parameters, but first two. Okay? So family, one of those family and type, we look at uh, socket stream, for example. So let me minimize this. So what happens? Yeah, this. So we use socket uh, AF. Uh, INET, this is a family of socket and this is the type of socket. Therefore, we, we could have the client object. Once you have a client object, then we can describe, we can connect. So, <clears throat> so um, once you have an object of a client socket, you can call it client, and connect the server. This is IP, and this is a port number, 8081, whatever the port number that you need to define at the server side that you need to connect, because server set up the port and open it and listen. So you are one of the clients, so you need to access to this port. If you have another client, you have to access to that same port. Through that port, you can access the server. And what client can do is two other functions possible, sending and receiving. Send say happy mercy and then receive whatever the message sent by the server that is received and then finally we display it. At the server side Similarly, you have to first create an object of a server. 
So let's say that is a solver. And then uh, solver needs to bind. Solver object needs to bind a specific port number. And then listen. Bind and listen. Okay? Once you listen, server is listening. But as far as there is a client accessing me, then I can receive it. The way that I accept from the client is server.accept. This is a function. What could I accept from clients? The two items, connection item and client address. Okay. And I went to test. Who's this? Oh. You want this? <laughs> If you have a Python, right, then has that. But it is not available yet. So you need to make it available. It's not, it's already there. Type Python, enter. And then type uh, socket. So simple. It is unknown. It's unknown. So then to import socket. Type socket. You might have a different error. Socket is a different error. Different error. So module is available. So what you need to do is a socket, that socket opens. Type this. Socket that socket open socket that AF or uh, init comma socket that socket stream close parenthesis. If there is no error, then it works, which means that socket object is created. Cannot. Your. Yeah, my, yeah, if I change my, my code. No, it's the IP that you have. Okay. Yours is dynamic. Okay. Okay. It's not static IP. Okay. So when you access him, you go to open space and come back to him, right? Yes. That is the idea. But out there, they do not know his IP. His IP is not static. Yeah. We have only one, one static ID here. Yours is all dynamic. Dynamic means so that is a, a private IP. It's not public IP. Publicly unknown. But privately, which means within Mercy, you are identified. You are identified. So how can you You need to have a first uh, static IP. Right. 
Yeah, it's an object is created. Yeah, yeah. You have a... Uh, uh, what's trying to say? Uh, uh, Suck it out. No, not yet. You have to do it. So, because you go that way, it's difficult for you to find yourself. That's what it's trying to say. So the only way to do what you're saying is find it. Most of the time, you can look at it and connect to it. Currently, how they talk to each other then? It's a loop back. It doesn't go outside. So it's a loop back inside. So local host. I looked at the local host. But if you use the IP address, his IP, his IP is private, not public. Which means that IP is not known by you. All uh, the router internally, there's a masking. So public IP is a transmitted to uh, no, public IP is transmitted to private IP. Therefore, router understands where he is, and that router understands where you are. So router doesn't do leaking from you to there because you are his private. For example, um, you run that there, uh, then you can access there. If that server is running on the server, then anywhere, from anywhere in the world, you can access. Because server is public. Only server problem, not the client problem. What server means is that server needs to give services, right? Mm -hmm. But server does not new. So server cannot. What you need to do is you, you should not do that uh, in the interactive mode. You have to create a file. You have to create a file. For example, this this is client, right? So that I call it C C for client. And then I have a server <coughs> This is a server Two programs Separate file. So client and server. And what server did here to create server object, uh, server socket object is created and bind server is bound to that IP and that port, server address. At this time, I call the server address and bring that up here. You can combine this and that together like this. Mm -hmm. So you have a double parenthesis and double parenthesis, open and double, right? So this all, all is a tuple, tuple format in Python. So that is bound to this. And listen and accept. Um, as it is accepted, then we can uh, provide some information of that connection. For example, uh,
some IP, remote IP, remote port number of the connection. So server knows where that uh, client come from. RMIP is remote IP. RMPT means remote port numbers. Those two information can be written in this way. And then print, uh, yeah, that, that is the same as that. And then I decode, I receive, server also receive from the client and decode it. Therefore, we can simply print it. If there is data, this data is available, then uh, we strip it, which means if there is some uh, white spaces, we eliminate that white space. And there's some And then, and then, uh, and then I, we return that to the client. The way data that we received is returned to the client, a little bit uh, reformatted, but, but the same data. Here, it is data. Data that encode. That data is something that we received. Data is something that we received from the client, the same data is returned by this. Okay? That's what I wanted to do. To run it. You need to have Two command line windows. Like this. So I would say upper one is the server. <coughs> so change the directory mercy dot mercy five nine five hacking and python. And then dot. And then I have uh, multiple Python programs there. And here, same thing. And we'll see. Server needs to be activated first. If you activate uh, client first, then uh, it's not going to work because there is no server to receive any any uh, request from the from the client. Okay. For example, I, I do. Python, my client. If I start this, I do not have a server program yet. There's an error because they, uh, no connection is available. But at the server side, it doesn't connect immediately, but it binds a particular IP and port number and listen. Once there is a server uh, request and a client request, then it connects. So server side will be okay. Mini server or UI.
start start running, right? Server starting up and running at the, this IP port number. That port number already defined here. There is a port number. Still alive. Why? Because it's a bind and listen. It's now at this point. Listen, right? And then when a client tries to send some data, then that is the point in time to accept. So let's try it. Client. Why is it slow? Because there is performance of my lab. Now. What I'm trying to do is that uh, I want to send uh, uh, some data internally hard coded on other data received from my command line put together so that I can say what did I say? Happy mercy which is concatenated with the, the data from user 99. So happy mercy 99. So here, the server connected by connected connected uh, connected from connected from dot 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 connected from dot 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 and this at the port number this thirty two nine thirty four. This is a port number opened by client, but server port number. It's always this, 65, 530. And then this is a message. What was delivered is hello mercy and 99. 99 is taken from the user. Combine them together. Received this and sent it back. When it sent it back, we did something here, right? And then, uh, one line and then put that in the center of the next line and then to put okay so I wouldn't practice you should have that program therefore now next phase is to attack client and solver We do not attack the real server. We cannot. So that right now you have to build you have to your server and clients. And then let them fight. What? So now I gotta build the server and the client. We'll do this um, with this client and server program. The server is simple TCP server, real message server. 
And another program that we will do today, hopefully, web server and client program to connect this kind of server program is another Python. If we have a web server, what would be the client program? Web browser. So we'll, we'll do two sets of uh, client and server program. Okay? Web server and web client. And TCP, IP server, and, and client program. We'll look at the traffic and grab some packets, one time by Wireshark. The whole scenario that we will do today. Before we go, that we do uh, denial of service attack here between client and server. So this is you you should have this running. You should have this is this is this is the first step. If you do not have this, then entire class you cannot do anything. Do this. Similarly, that we will have a web server also. We are not going to use uh, any uh, Apache web server. We are going to build a web server in, in Python. Okay, using Socket. That is in the slide. On the, the program that you wrote? The program's on the slide? No. Uh, not, not this uh, uh, messy style. And yeah, that's what we want. Why? Do you want messy? Oh, not, not the messy soccer player, but messy. Messy? Uh, how do you pronounce it? Soccer player Messi and the Messi here. Nico, can you? No, you got it. That's a, it's the same, it's the same thing. From, oh, so he's Messi here? Really? Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> but he's not Messi, right? <laughs> oh, maybe. Maybe he messed. He, had, he made the opponent messed up. Okay, that works. <laughs> Remember that uh, <clears throat> first time, because I didn't give uh, 99 or whatever the number, it, it didn't work. Uh, in this main program, we take the, the first argument followed by first argument which follows the command from user command line. So we take it sys.arg one, which is the second argument from the user input, and take it here i in the main function, and we combine that i uh, when we send uh, here mercy, hello mercy, concatenate, and string of i. i is the number, so we convert that to that. Why I was trying that? While you are working on this, if I <coughs> am using, for example,
keep sending, this guy is sending, receiving and sending back till 99. But it's still working so good. <laughs> so far it works, yeah. right. In what way it's, it's not going to work? Adding more requests. More requests, how? In the for loop that was in the attack. There's already for loop. What should I do? In the DOS uh, Python code, there was a, a for loop in a range and will show only 100, 100 uh, requests. So it should increase the range. So I have to do this. Hmm. What I need to do. Okay. Simply what you need to do is this. This many requests came up. So, Professor, you were calling the DOS Python, mm -hmm. ah, opening the old multiple, terminal. Multiple DOS. That was the trading that That's I was right. telling. <laughs> it was very bad. When it is resolved all, it starting again. So, because there was bulk request is tough. denial of service during that time period. Comment. Our server system, server program is so simple, right? Therefore, it does not have any protective uh, modules implemented. Possible protective module is that if there are so many request if your server is idling uh, for a particular time period then your server needs to be self shut down that is the effect of denial of service but right now our server is so naive nothing no protection and still wait until fully attacked. But anyway, this is a uh, server and client program. I wanted to have that. If you need to see more, then you can see more. Mm -hmm. oh, it's still running. <laughs> it stopped and running.
stop again. I want you to do it. Yeah, you can do it. You can do it. And then see that. Connect. There it is. Post. And then um, whatever I, a port number that server can create. So in this window, you can do server program. Python. Do you know PI move? I just enter the same thing you have up there. There's a PI. So then you have to be very careful. The editing framework. Okay. Hmm? So you have to create it. That is there. So uh, that's on from there's a more so that the action. This is a full one I'm going to go Client version. This is a server, right? So the extended version of this is one that you just saw this. That's very simple to do that. And then one, this is the client. So you can recline this and the server. Two programs. It's the same, but mine is a little bit more uh, testing with some comments. Yeah. Okay. This one, there's no, there's no uh, error, no comments. I can't change from work, so. Yeah, every time we, you need to, if you don't bring laptop to my class, it means many times you come to the war front with no weapon. <laughs> If anyone wants coffee, I'll let you know. Yeah, this one. 